fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're going to show you how to catch some fish today. So hey guys, I'm here at the IST show in Sacramento, and I just did a demo demonstration on how to catch big stripers in the Delta. I showed you what kind of equipment to use, the rods, I talked about the baits, I showed you how fast the reel, and actually showed you the lure in the tank, how I could make it look just like a fish, just sitting there still, not moving. Because those stripers, those big ones, like to eat stuff that they don't have to chase. So don't miss this one. One of the big things about big fish is that you have to remember they're loners, so you don't find them schooled up. A lot of times when I get into a school of nice ones, they're going to be that 8 to maybe 15 to 18 pounds. You might find them in schools where you can get double hookups or three hookups at a time, but never have I ever seen in my career of everybody catching fish over 25 pounds. It just doesn't happen. You know, those fish, I think, when they get older, they get a little bit isolated and then they're more solo. Back in the old days, you know, when you're, let's just say 30 years ago, and you catch a big fish, nobody threw them back. Everybody cleaned them, took them home, and ate them. Well, when you're doing this, and you're cleaning them, I always cut the billies open, looked at them, because I was always fascinated on, you know, what those things eat. And I could say one of the main things is your squawfish, uh, bluegill, you know, those are their main diets. This bait here, my fingers are eight inches, so that lure is probably about 11 inch. So you get a big fish, he wants to eat one time. He doesn't want to waste energy chasing little things like this. He wants to eat something. So he wants to eat something that's big in size. So you gotta have the right baits. And another thing is like a, a striper that's loner, he's sitting there and he's gonna be ready to ambush something. So I use like weed beds, I use uh, points, I use islands. Um, where I go, I, I'm gonna tell you right now that most of the time I'm in one to three feet of water when I'm after these. One of the techniques that I use is I found out is what I do is when I know a fish, say, feeds on squawfish, I go on YouTube, I mean, I go on the internet and I search and I find out what the squawfish, where it lives, what time of year it spawns, what it likes to eat. So, in other words, what I do is if I wanted to go after somebody and I knew he liked straw hat pizza, well, I'd go wait for him at a straw hat pizza. Same thing what I do with these squawfish. I learn what they eat. I learn their habitat. I learn where they live. Because I know if I go there, I'm going to catch them. So after I do that, the next thing I need to do is get the lure to work like those fish. So if you guys go over to this tank and look at the fish, you don't see it all of them swimming all over all crazy, right? You know how they just sit there like this and don't move? That's the perfect target for a fish that's that big that's looking for a meal. He's gonna come up from behind them and he's gonna grab them, spin them around, and he's done. But they look for that nonchalant lure. Well, to get a lure to do that, to a lot of you guys, it's probably you're probably saying that's impossible, but it's not. They make these big baits, they're very neutral. And one of the things that helped me is I designed my own about 20 years ago, and I learned how these things work. <laughs> Um, you either make them out of wood or resin, and I found that resin is the easiest way to make these baits because they make what they call spears. So basically how these work on swim baits is that they all float. And what happens is this bait constantly wants to float up. Then you position the weights in the body to sink it so you get a sink rate. So like if you went into the shop and you looked over there and you saw a swim bait the same color, you see three of them, you're gonna see one that floats, one that sinks slow about like this, and then you're gonna see one that sinks fast and it's gonna go like this. You make them so that they float up and they're weighted to pull down. I'll tell you guys a trick, is that when you guys try to re-weight these things, 
it's very important where you put the weight. So there's sometimes when I want the bait to roll on its side, then I would put set the weight up higher in the body. So then when I tuck, pull it a little bit, the bait's gonna roll. And there's at times when you don't want it to roll, so you, I have it where it's set lower in the bottom and it'll keep it tracking straight. Fish are kind of a funny creature. There's sometimes when they want it real fast, sometimes when they want it slow, but these big fish, they want it slow as you could go. They're looking to ambush it. This particular bait is, was made by my nephew, and this is the color that I prefer to use. It's something like in a brownish color because the squawfish look this color. They're kind of a brownish. They're not white. Sometimes I use a bone color because, again, fish don't see colors. They see shades. So if the water's clear, I'll use a bone color, which is that white one, well, kind of a yellowish color. And then when the water's stained, I'll go to the carp-looking color or the squawfish. In the Delta, you have current. I'm going to tell you right now, I fish um, Frank's Track, Big Break, Sherman Island, Liberty Island. I go into these big flats because that's where these kind of fish live. They like to be in that one to three feet of water. They like to hide behind the grass. They like, to, that's their home. Well, if you can find out where these guys live, then that's where obviously you need to go fishing because you're going to go, that's where those big fish are. <laughs> But one other thing about this swim bait is I could get this thing to just sit neutral. So if I'm only in water this deep, this lure hits the water, it splashes almost like a fish jumping, but it doesn't move, it just sits there. It stays like this. And if I just go like this a little bit with the rod tip, this tail just goes like this. Looks just like those fish in there. And you better be holding on to that rod because when they hit it, it's gonna take the rod out of your hand. There is no messing around, you're just gonna see a monster's boil like someone threw a Volkswagen in the water. But they'll go after these things because this is the natural looking prey. This company is called Dips. They make one of the, the better ones, but they also have a high price tag on them. So a bait like this, this one is a, a slow sinker, but I actually, it has a plastic cover over the top. I actually put it in hot water. I took the hooks off, I peeled it back, I drilled a hole, took some weight out to where I had it. When it hit the water, it didn't move. So basically, when this thing hits the water, it doesn't move at all. And then if I sweep it hard, it goes down about a foot and it just stays there, it doesn't move. It just sits there, just like this. Perfect. You have to have a lot of patience when you're fishing for these big fish because when, you, when I do it, I might make a cast and it takes a while to bring it in. I just let it sit there, just like a fish would naturally. If you're in the current, it'll just sweep with the current. It will not move, it just stays right there. This particular bait, 200 bucks. Well, you don't lose them unless the fish breaks you off. Turn the reel real slow, just like this. And it's actually kind of hard when you're fishing just to let it drift around like this. But I just went looking just like he's just moseying along and that big fish will just come and inhale that thing. So these here are also neutral buoyant. So when I throw it out, it doesn't sink, it sits there. And then when I sweep it, it'll go down like that and it just stays there and it just moves like this. It has a picture of the kid holding a fish like this. That's my nephew. It had this bait in his mouth. And when it comes up, you'll see it. You can't even see it. That fish choked this thing. So you can imagine how big it was. So this is the same bait, but it's a bluegill color because that's what our bluegill look like down in the Delta system. Stripers. This is a big bait. See my hands, that's eight inches. It's pretty wide and they choke it. So this lure is in their throat when they bite this thing. See, it doesn't look really natural, live. Go ahead, fish. And like when you're fishing, if you watch how slow I'm turning this handle, it's hard to do it like this. I mean, you just almost have to have a cup of coffee here and then take a sip, put it down. I do these seminars. I think when I've gotten older, 
I like to teach people and you know, I could teach him something and he'll come back in and tell me or email me back and say, hey, it worked, I caught a lot of fish, thanks for the tip. That makes me more happy than catching one of those 30 pounders. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.